The Ancients, the Vul Rebellion, the Bronze Legion, and the Red Mist have made their call to arms. Are you ready to answer it? Hello everyone, it's Nikino with Action Esports. For both beta and release players, the current feature game mode is a great way to get started playing and thinking about constructed. Named Call to Arms, this event has you pick one of six pre-constructed decks and play against other players, racking up a win streak before losing a single game. There are six decks for you to pick from, so you can experiment with them all and determine your favorite playstyle. The best part is that it's completely free, enabling new players to test the game out before they start spilling money on packs and keeper drafts. Let's take a closer look at the decks and try them out. The first deck to choose from is called Death and Taxes. As the name suggests, this black-green deck thrives on killing your opponent's heroes and creeps. Track is the strongest card in your deck and will triple the opposing hero's bounty, which in turn will help you buy more expensive items. Make sure you have the kill secured before you cast track on a hero, or else it will go to waste. Sadly, the items featured in this deck can't win you the game on your own, so you might have to rely on secret shop items to get you something impactful. Spending your gold might not have to be something to worry about, as Revtel Convoy is another strong card in the deck that you should be aware of. Its attack is equal to half your gold, so be careful not to spend too much when you have it on the board, because it can do some serious damage if you don't. Cheating Death is another excellent inclusion in the deck and will potentially allow your allies to survive with one health, so you can use them as a sacrifice to draw cards with the help of Lich. The second featured deck is named Green Machine. It is a mono green deck that relies on ramp cards like Stars Align and Salamane's Favor to accelerate to the late game, so you're able to play highly costed powerful creeps such as Thunderhide Pack and Thunderhide Alpha. These creeps will allow you to close out the game as quick as possible, as one hit from them will deal a significant chunk of damage to your opponent's tower. For support, you have Rosalie for Juvenator and Rebel Decoy to protect your tower and allies. Cheating Death and Mist of Avernus will make sure your wideboard is protected and your allies are able to push with loads of damage. The third deck available is called Trench Warfare. This red-green deck relies heavily on heroes and cleave damage, but does not have many tools to clear the board. Do not underestimate it, however, since Ursa and Viper can solo carry lanes with their passive abilities that constantly debuff their enemies. Remember to use Clear the Deck and Empower to deal with wide boards. If you do get overwhelmed at any point in the game, your strong late game tools like Rosalie for Juvenator and Time of Triumph will help you bounce back. Next up on our list is the mono red deck named Ascendance. This is a hard hitting deck with many single target removal options. If you're a fan of smashing through your opponent's defenses without giving them a chance to react, this is the deck for you. Cards like Fight Through the Pain and Kraken Shell allow you to regain initiative after you play them. Be careful though, this deck has no board clears and does not have many creep cards, so you might struggle if you ever become behind. If you do happen to fall on the defensive, you can use cards like Primal Roar to stun the threat and send its allied neighbors flying to other lanes. On the offensive, use Double Edge to finish off your opponent in one swift strike, but watch out for the armor debuff. The fifth deck on the list is called Out of Control. Very appropriate for a deck with Meepo, isn't it? This red-blue control deck focuses on summoning swarms of creeps with spells and being supported by Ogre Magi's multicast ability to recast those spells. You can even multicast Divided We Stand and annoy your opponent to death with Meepos. This deck, while being a control deck, lacks any necessary board clears like Annihilation and Conflagration. This means you will need to rely on cards such as Dimensional Portal and Red Mist Pillager to regain control of the board. Once you are ahead, you can then finish off the game with Double Edge or Time of Triumph. The sixth and final deck is called Upkeep Killer. This is a black-blue deck that focuses on, as the name implies, upkeep kills. If you don't know what upkeep kills are, be sure to check out Richard Garfield's video about it, as it's very informative. Long story short, upkeep kills are about killing your enemies before the action phase, effectively having them be out of the game for an additional turn compared to killing them normally. Improvements such as Ignite and Creeps, like Plague Wards, deal small amounts of damage to enemies, so they are either weakened before the fight or removed from the board entirely. Trebuchet and Unsupervised Artillery are passive effects that chip away at the tower slowly. This improvement spam is very potent, but will take a bit of time to get through. And that's it, those are the 6 decks that you can pick from. Depending on what kind of player you are, there is something there for every type of playstyle. Would you like to destroy the board with Brute Strength? Try Green Machine or Ascendance. Want to control everything? Death and Taxes or Upkeep Killer is for you. Regardless of what you pick, this event is a great way to jump straight into Artifact if you're new, or brush up on a new archetype if you're an experienced player. What Call to Arms deck is your favorite? What changes would you make for it if you had the opportunity? Let us know and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.